it's becoming colder by the minute. The temperature drops below zero very quickly. And although there's no snow, the cold is becoming unbearable. Hoarfrost appears on the ground, the grass, and the trees. And ice forms on bodies of water at an incredible rate. Shivering people all over the planet raise their eyes to the sky. And their jaws drop in disbelief. The sun has become twice as small as it used to be. It now looks like a distant speck, and it won't be able to heat the Earth any longer. But the worst thing is, there's a huge blazing rock coming right at the horrified spectators from the sky, and the impact with that thing will undoubtedly do a lot of damage. Okay, let's go back to our objective reality. The Earth is exactly in the sweet spot of our solar system. It's neither too close nor too far from the sun, making the temperature on our planet not just tolerable, but rather pleasant. Scientists often call Venus, the second planet from the sun, our Earth's evil twin, because it's so hot and inhospitable that no life is possible on it. Of course, there are thick clouds in its atmosphere that rain acid, and the greenhouse gases raise the temperature on the surface to unbearable values. But even if Venus didn't have those, nothing would still be able to live there because of the proximity to the sun. If there was any liquid water, it would evaporate too quickly, leaving life no chance to develop. On the other hand, Mars, going next in line after Earth, is a bit too far away from the sun, which makes it cold and lonely. The temperature on its surface is below freezing, and it never warms up enough for water to stay liquid for long. That's not to mention the lack of atmosphere on the red planet, the element that provides the Earth with breathable air. So, if our planet shifted closer to or farther away from the sun, its temperature would either rise or fall respectively. A few hundred miles wouldn't make much difference, the circling of Earth around the Sun is uneven anyway, and we constantly get nearer to our star or fly a bit away from it. The distance that would matter is measured in millions of miles. And yeah, just like I showed you at the beginning of this video, we'd see the Sun a lot smaller than we do now if we went that far. The temperatures might not fall at the exact moment of the shift, as there would still be some warmth left. But in the following winter, our planet would probably stay cold forever. The oceans would be covered with ice, and the overall sea level would drop. And ultimately, the ice would reflect more of the sun's heat back into the atmosphere and space, not allowing the surface of our planet to get the necessary warmth. And more ice means less water vapor in the atmosphere. Water vapor captures heat too, creating clouds, so the colder it is, the less rain. The cold and the lack of rain would not let any plants survive for long. So the areas of icy and barren landscape would grow fast, leaving only the areas along the banks of rivers intact for a while. After some time, the rivers would stop running too, either frozen or dried out because of losing their sources, lakes and seas, which would, of course, freeze as well any life dwelling near them would disappear. Plants first, and with them, everything else, since plants produce both food and breathable air. And with that, the Earth would become a frozen wasteland. As for the giant blazing rock I mentioned, it was an asteroid coming from outer space because of the shift of our planet's orbit. Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, acts as a natural shield for us against space rocks. It has a huge mass, and most asteroids flinging from outer space get caught in its gravity and fall on its surface. There's no life possible on Jupiter, and its surface is gaseous, so asteroids tend to disappear in it without a trace. Still, some manage to get past Jupiter, where Mars comes into play. It also contributes to our defense by holding the asteroid belt between itself and Jupiter in place. The two planets' combined mass creates a gravitational field that doesn't allow the asteroids from the belt to fly in random directions, hitting everything in their path. 
If there was no Mars between us and the belt, we'd be used to meteor showers almost more than actual rains. Say the Earth has replaced Mars in its orbit, and now we're hundreds of millions of miles farther away from the Sun. The mass of the Earth is more or less similar to that of Mars, so the asteroid belt is still in its place. The temperatures will still fall, though, and life will soon go extinct. But if Mars stayed where it is, and the Earth just shifted away, it would be a recipe for disaster. There's no chance the planets would orbit the Sun at the same rate because their mass is not equal. At some point, they would collide with each other. Taking their speed into account, they'd both crack and shatter, perhaps creating another asteroid belt in our solar system. It would be no more hopeful for us if the Earth decided to jump closer to the Sun. Apart from the star seeming more like a giant, pitiless blazing ball in the sky, its heat would melt the glaciers on our planet, making sea levels rise abruptly. The water would flood major parts of the continents, and more surfaces of the planet would be covered with water, which means more heat absorption. That would bring about a further rise in the temperature. Also, those large bodies of water would evaporate like crazy, releasing tons of water vapor and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas that absorbs heat, and so does water vapor. Together, they would trap more and more of the sun's warmth, creating thick, roiling clouds in the sky, almost like on Venus, but without the acid. And that thick blanket of clouds would also contribute to heating the surface of our planet. In the end, the entire Earth would heat up so much that life on its surface would become unbearable for most. Only the sturdiest of creatures would be able to survive temperatures so high. Those that dwell in our deserts, for example. Despite the rainfall, which wouldn't cease as in the cold scenario, plants would still have difficulty adapting to the new and hot environments. The ones in the cooler regions of the planet would be the first to wilt and go. But then, plants from the moderate and finally tropical climes would also give up. And yet again, the Earth would turn into a barren ball of rock, only this time an overheated one rather than frozen. Our planet's distance from the Sun, its tilt, its speed of rotation around its own axis, its orbit around the Sun, and even the presence of the Moon in its skies, all of that is crucial for life on Earth to exist. For instance, if the planet wasn't tilted relative to the Sun, it would be unbearably hot on the equator and impossibly cold at the poles. The seasons would also stop changing, dividing the Earth into strips of endless summer and winter. Our planet is heated up evenly from all sides, with the current tilt and rotation like you would roast a barbecue. It turns to the sun with one side to warm it up, while the other cools down during the night. Were there no change of night and day, we'd probably only live in some areas of our planet where constant, never-ending twilight would be. Just imagine our life without those beautiful sunrises and sunsets. Maybe we'll just let it stay as it is, okay? You're relaxing in your room and streaming some good tunes when suddenly the network's down. You try rebooting your phone, but there's still no connection. Out of nowhere, your sister barges into your room in panic. She's screaming something about rings. Boxing rings, wedding rings, rings on the tub. She's not making any sense. So she drags you out of the house and shows you the sky. You take a look up and see streaks of objects forming miles above the Earth's surface. Her connection seems to work. The two of you check online what's going on, and everywhere the same thing is making headlines. Rings are suddenly appearing in our sky. Hashtag Earth rings is breaking the record, and videos are going super viral. Your sister can't help but join the crowd and takes a bunch of selfies with the sky. You run to the TV in your living room to check out the news. Scientists are warning about a coming catastrophe and explaining that everyone should remain indoors. Even though it's a cloudless day in the middle of summer, the weather seems to be getting colder and colder. Suddenly, the signal's cut off. Other channels show nothing either. Then you see your neighbors packing their bags and heading out. Others follow suit. 
You hesitate a bit, but decide to do the same in the end. Your sister is still outside taking selfies when you urge her to come along with you to seek some answers. The two of you hop in your car and drive out into the city. The rings above seem to be gaining more mass with each second. You and your sister are getting colder and colder. You head to the university to see if anyone knows anything, but there's no one there. Only one parked car in the lot. And it's a good thing you recognize that car. You and your sister rush in and find the astronomy professor doing some quick calculations and trying to figure out why all this is happening. He urges you to take seats and begins explaining. No one knows what this is all about, but it's limiting the sun's exposure on Earth. Which explains why it's getting colder by the minute. Why the rings are getting thicker is a mystery too. On Saturn, the rings are made up of ice and rock particles. They can be as small as an ant or the size of a bus. The rocks could be leftover meteor debris, or even remnants of dwarf planets. But since Earth is so close to the Sun, ice wouldn't be something you'd find floating above us. With all these rocks piled up, they block the Earth's access to Sun to warm us up and give us light. The professor goes on to explain that Earth will enter a new ice age, and oxygen levels will deplete within a year's time unless those newborn rings disappear anytime soon. This also explains why there's no connection. The rocks that form the rings are hitting and breaking the satellites. Suddenly, you hear a loud ringing noise outside. The three of you head outside and see a helicopter blasting an alarm with a red light flashing. Everyone to your homes now! This is not a drill! Everyone, head home! You get in your car with your sister, but the roads are jammed. You have to go on foot, which will take two hours. There's no way anyone can remain outdoors. You venture out seeing everyone stuck on the road. They're all arguing with each other and causing chaos. You try not to get caught in the middle of anything and sneak your way to the highway. With the rings getting thicker, less sunlight is breaking through. This Ice Age info is stuck in your head, chilling you even more. You take a deep breath and see a thin mist coming out of your mouth. The sky is getting darker and you're still not home yet. Your sister is tired and needs to rest, but you urge her to move on. You find an abandoned clothes shop and head inside. The store clerks are actually giving away thick jackets for everyone to wear. You grab a couple and slip them on. Only one more hour to get home, but the sky is completely dark. There's no way you and your sister can go out in such conditions. So you decide to camp up in the clothes shop. They set up a mini bonfire in the middle of the shop and create makeshift sleeping bags with the rest of the unused clothes. Luckily, there's enough food to feed everyone, including you and your sister. It's the middle of the night. The fire goes out, and you can't see outside the shop. You head to the window and open it up. A huge pile of snow spills in and wakes everyone up. It's the middle of August, and a snowstorm formed overnight. Everyone is freezing, and they start the fire anew. There's no radio or any way to find out what's happening. The wind picks up and starts shaking the shop. Things start falling off the shelves, but you and everyone else are cozy by the fire. The next day, You look outside and see the entire area covered in snow. You live in a sunny place where it barely rains, and the rings in the outer atmosphere are even bigger than last night. Out of nowhere, a truck filled with people pulls over, and the driver tells you there's a shelter for everyone some miles away. The truck has chains all over the tires and is equipped for the worst snowy conditions. Even though it's morning, the sky is pretty dark. You and everyone else hop in. Abandoned cars, some with their doors still open, are scattered all over. The truck drives around them, or just smashes through the ones in the way. It pulls over next to an ambulance and takes all the equipment to help the ones in need. You drive past your neighborhood and see your entire house covered in snow. The large tree in your backyard has fallen under the weight of the snow and broken the roof, allowing snow to flood in. The truck speeds through and gets to the shelter, which, to your surprise, is the mall. You get out and see many of the townspeople being led to various stores that have now turned into dorms and health units. You're left in a sports store with a bunch of other people. Your sister has also been able to bunk with you. And to your luck, you see the professor helping out some people. But shortly after that, a loud explosion blasts through the mall and shatters glass screens. Everyone ducks for cover. You see people running outside. You head out and see a large metallic object lying in front of the mall entrance. 
There are people crowding the entire area, so it's not easy to see what all the fuss is about. But after getting a closer look, you find out it's a satellite fallen from orbit. It crashed in the front yard and made the boom. There were also reports of other satellites crashing on Earth in the most random places. That means all communication has been wiped out of the map. You run back inside the mall to await what happens next. You look at your sister in fear, not knowing that the new Ice Age has just begun. One year later. You're relaxing in your bunker when your sister barges in, freaking out. The rings are still there, but it's something else now. You run outside and see everyone gathering around and looking at the sky. Within a year, temperatures have dropped to freeze the entirety of the Earth's surface. Deserts and tropical jungles have turned into icy wastelands. More than half of the wildlife went extinct, and trees are as rare as a four-leaf clover, which means oxygen levels have dropped significantly. Most of the population, or what's remaining of it, live with oxygen tanks, with scientists still trying to crack the case of the rings. Exactly what the professor predicted. But up in the sky, rocks seem to be falling down and crashing all over. It starts off far away, but then the rocks begin to fall down close by. You and everyone else run back into the mall, which has been covered with a layer of metal to keep the warmth inside. It should be pretty safe in there. If the rocks are falling down, that means the rings are dissipating. Suddenly, you're full of hope that the Ice Age might be over soon. If you're picking a vacation spot, you should definitely look at this list. And then remember to never visit any of these places. They're incredibly dangerous, and life struggles to exist in them at all. This is Ethiopia's geothermal field, Dalal. With toxic green pools and bright orange sand, the landscape here resembles another planet. Scientists believe that it shares a good resemblance with the surface of Jupiter's moon, Io. The bright yellows and oranges just scream that this place is poisonous. And your instincts are right. Dalal is full of sulfur, which makes it uninhabitable. This place looks so crazy because it's actually in the mouth of a volcano. What's even more strange is that, unlike normal volcanoes, this one is inverted. Most volcanoes rise into the sky like mountains, but Dalal is indented. The mouth of the volcano sits at 160 feet below sea level. The surface above the volcano is covered with water reservoirs, soil, and crazy mineral formations that look like coral reefs. All of this is created by the activity of the magma, about two and a half miles underground. The magma heats the water in the ground, and it begins to rise through layers of salt. When the volcano is live, it produces a lot more magma, which forces more water up to the surface. The water brings minerals up with it, and they create the fake coral reef. The breathtaking visuals at Dalal don't end at the mineral formations. There's even a purple and yellow lake. You wouldn't want to risk swimming in it, though. The lake's temperature is above that of boiling water. The heat is one of the main reasons that this isn't the perfect vacation destination. Dalal's average temperature is higher than anywhere else on Earth, at about 94 degrees Fahrenheit. By comparison, the average temperature across the United States is about 54 degrees. This part of the world barely ever experiences rain, so it's one of the driest places on the planet as well. Amazingly, people were once settled in this incredibly hostile climate. The small village evacuated, though, leaving Dalal deserted. Dalal has the highest average temperature on Earth, but there is a place with a higher recorded peak temperature. Death Valley, California was recorded to reach 134 degrees Fahrenheit at one point. That's so hot that you couldn't even fry an egg on the rocks there. It would just burn within a few seconds. Unlike Dalal, it isn't always this unhospitable. It can be comfortable for humans from November to February, and it has even seen rain and snow. The temperature might not even be far from what you have at home. This valley is also home to some stones that were nicknamed the Sailing Stones. These huge rocks sit at the bottom of a dried lake, and they sometimes move without anyone knowing why. They weigh several hundred pounds, and it wouldn't be possible for a person to move them, 
So the process was a complete mystery for years. After a while, scientists noticed that the stones moved infrequently. Maybe only once every three or four years. They only move a couple of dozen feet, too. Using this information, they eventually realized that the rocks were actually being moved whenever it got icy. On the coldest nights, at the bottom of the dried up lake, a thin layer of ice began to form. Then the wind would begin to move the rocks slowly, at a speed of 6 to 16 feet per minute along the bottom of the lake. The stones could only go so small a distance because it was icy so infrequently. We travel from the hottest place on the planet to the coldest, Vostok Station, Antarctica. The lowest temperature ever on Earth was recorded here, at negative 128 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 18 times colder than your refrigerator. It isn't just freezing, though. The station is located at an altitude of 11,500 feet. At this elevation, there's much less oxygen, which can cause dizziness and breathing problems. The people who work here have to experience the polar night. This means that they spend 120 days a year in total darkness. All of these extreme conditions combine to make it one of the most dangerous places on Earth. There is another place called Death Valley in Russia. It isn't dangerous because of high temperatures or dryness. Instead, it gained its reputation because of some scary, mystical events. Some people traveling through the Russian wilderness stumbled upon strange structures that looked a bit like giant, half-buried cauldrons. The travelers used them as shelter from the elements, and some disappeared without a trace. When people returned to the same area, they fell ill. Nobody understood what the cauldrons were or what was happening, so they began to gain a supernatural reputation. The valley has been subject to a number of investigations in which researchers try to solve the mystery of the area. They went on exploratory expeditions and even got a better view of the situation from the air. On one of these expeditions, a pilot discovered a new cauldron. When he landed and found it, though, he found that it was actually just the opening to a small cave. The modern understanding is that all of the cauldrons were really just strange rock formations and entrances to caves. The tired and confused travelers were just bewildered by their unusual appearance. The illnesses and disappearances were likely a result of the dangerous gases released in local geothermal activity. In reality, the travelers were probably camping out in an area with an accumulation of CO2 or other poisonous gases. Most of these places have been so dangerous that they make it difficult for even the hardiest bacteria to survive. But some places are so dangerous because of the creatures that live there. Snake Island is thriving and filled with life, but it's just as inhospitable to people as the other places on this list. It sits 21 miles off the coast of Brazil and hosts some of the world's most venomous snakes. Some people claimed that there could be as many as half a million snakes in total. That turns out to be an exaggeration, though. In reality, there are likely only about 4,000 venomous snakes. The movement of the Earth trapped them on the island many years ago. Initially, there was a strip of land connecting the island to the mainland. But over time, changing sea levels and land movements cut them off. The snakes and a few other animals were left to live on the island in isolation. It isn't just that you shouldn't visit this island. You're actually banned from setting foot on it, unless you have a special pass for researching the island's wildlife. This measure is in place to protect people from the venomous snakes and to protect the rare species of snake from humanity. The only man-made object on the island is a lighthouse, designed to help ships avoid the island. When it was built and automated, humans left the island forever. Other dangerous places have been created by humanity itself. One of the craziest is North Yungus Road in Bolivia. This is a 43-mile stretch of road that winds through the mountains. The narrow trail is cut into the cliff's side with a sheer drop on one side. If you looked out your window, you would see a 2,000-foot drop into a seemingly never-ending chasm. It's described as a cycle path, but you can often see huge trucks traveling along this road. This can cause huge problems because the road isn't wide enough for two large vehicles to pass each other. 
about 300 cars go missing here every year. The constant rockfalls, waterfalls, fog, and rain make this place even more dangerous. Bolivia is home to another dangerous place that you wouldn't want to risk visiting, Madidi National Park. The park is a vast jungle, larger than 20 New York cities. The whole area is filled with dangerous plants, animals, and insects. It's highly discouraged to visit this park without being accompanied by experts. Unlike humans, some living things can survive in incredibly hostile conditions. The Gateway to the Underworld in Turkmenistan would be completely impossible to visit for any human being. The terrifying crater was made when a gas field collapsed in on itself. This freed all of the dangerous gases, so scientists decided to set it alight to prevent it from poisoning the surrounding area. The fire was lit 50 years ago, and it still burns today. The temperature at the bottom of the crater is extremely high, but some bacteria have found a way to survive, even here. These bacteria are entirely unique to this one small area, and they live entirely engulfed in flames. Similarly, life can also exist at extremely low temperatures. Scientists drilled a borehole 12,000 feet deep into the ice of Antarctica. On these excavated pieces of ice, they found an unknown bacterium. We don't have any idea how it could survive such extreme temperatures. What's more, bacteria can exist even in space. Scientists found bacteria on the outer surface of the International Space Station. It spent three years there at extremely low temperatures and intense solar radiation, and still, it survived. 